Hey everyone, it is Tanya. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build. I'm back with a very special installment of the Squish today as we are going to be building tiny homes for three of the occults in the Sims 4. So obviously we just got werewolves not too long ago and I had a couple of suggestions from y'all to do occult tiny houses all on the same lot, kind of like things I've done in the past. Uh, like solid color or just like lots of multiple tiny houses. I did that with Eco Lifestyle, I think, as well. And so uh, we're going to have three of them on this lot, starting here with the werewolf one. I just try to get the general structure I'm thinking of, place it down, and then I move on. And we go back and forth between the whole lot, and then we'll be going to the interior at the end. But over here is going to be the spellcaster house. It, uh, <laughs> it changes a lot. I was very indecisive with what I wanted that one to look like. And for the most part, I kept like the werewolf house to the style that came with werewolves, the vampire house to the style that came with vampires. But for some reason, when it came to spellcasters, I really wanted it to be more cottagey. So the <laughs> spellcaster home is like cottage living threw up on it. Um, I just really like that style and I felt like it fit really nicely for the lot I was building here. So you'll see that come together. I thought about having like a rooftop area and this like this swoopy roof, but I will be changing that, but I wanted to keep it in so you could see the process. Uh, and then over on the other side of the werewolf house is going to be where the vampire one ends up being. And uh, I had a lot of fun figuring out how I wanted that to work. Uh, obviously, vampires and werewolves are not going to get along. I don't think any of these sims are going to get along, but I think it was a fun idea to try to have a space where they all have to live together. There are some communal areas as well. And I just, I thought it was a fun challenge to have the three different occults on this lot because of all the different items and just having like a magical little lot like this. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, but speaking of which, if you would like to download this lot, if this does sound fun to you, I will have it available on the Sims 4 gallery. You can find it under my EA ID which is Griffey, G-R-Y-P-H-I. You could also find it under the hashtag Miss Griffey, and that information will also be in the description down below as well. And each of these houses has one bedroom and one bathroom, and the total lot value is 104,879 Smolians. Uh, but right now I'm starting on the landscaping. I also put like a gate at the entrance, which I thought looked really cool. Like it was a little tiny home community, and I'm putting some broken down fences out front here. I was thinking. This would be a cute little area to have like a community garden for these three homes. Uh, so that's what I'm working on here. I end up getting some of the dirt patches from Cottage Living as well as a few different planter pots from various packs. There's also going to be some decorative plants out here as well. I go through it and uh, keep adding as we go. I, I just jump all over this lot. I also wanted to make sure there were some activities specific to each of the occults on this lot so there ends up being a cauldron right outside of the spellcaster home we have um the telescope outside of the werewolf home the werewolf or not the werewolf the vampire has an underground portion of their house and also there's a bunch of graves outside which is quite fun uh, i just thought it was a really cool concept to include all of these things on one lot because i typically only will focus on one or the other. Obviously, I recently did a tiny house just for a werewolf as we just got werewolves. I've done them for spellcasters and vampires in the past. I, I really love occult builds and I love tiny houses, so <laughs> this was just a natural idea. And uh, yeah, so I'm just playing around now with the vampire house, trying to get a general structure going on before we continue decorating the other houses. I believe the vampire one is going to be the last one that we go ahead and decorate at the end. I just was trying to figure out the shape of it. And I think it comes out really cool here. We have a lot of fencing around the outside and really steep roofs and roof decorations. And it's very dark, but I think the colors I went with worked out really nicely. We have like a very brown one for the spellcaster. It, we have a black house for the vampire and like a blue and brown one for the werewolf. Uh, but you can see some of the landscaping coming together here. I'm also changing my mind about the shapes of some of the decks and fixing that up and just kind of going around constantly and adding more. This is one of those builds where no matter how much I added, I felt like it wasn't done yet. Like I could add more and I probably could have even after all of the time I spent on this. 
spent hours more on it, just adding more little details here and there. The exterior is my absolute favorite. A majority of this build is on the exterior. So you'll see that. Uh, and, and of course, as you could probably see by the length of this video, this, this took a long time to do anyway. I don't normally have videos this long, but uh, I cut out as much as I possibly could and I still felt like uh, it was a little bit long, but it's okay. We're here and I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you do, by the way, I don't normally say this this early in the video, but if you want to give this video a thumbs up, that does really help me out. And if you want to see some more builds in the future, whether it's occult builds, tiny houses, or maybe some upcoming really fun builds with The Sims 4 High School Years, I did get to build some of the official lots in that game, and I will be sharing videos on that at some point in the future, uh, <laughs> the whole process. So if you would like to see you know what that's like having an early copy of the game and all of the different steps throughout the process. Uh, you might want to subscribe. Click that little subscribe button. It is free, and we can um, we we can make that happen. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. It feels so good to finally be able to talk about it. I've been keeping the secret for such a long time, like a ridiculously long time. <laughs> Oh, also, uh, if you haven't seen it already, I do have a vlog channel now. It's called Just Tanya. I will try to remember to link it down below, but if not, you can find it uh, on my channel page. There's a link to all of my other channels there. And I should be posting a vlog today. I decided to vlog on the day that high school got announced. I was just so excited. Uh, but there's a variety of stuff on there, just like behind the scenes of, you know, YouTube stuff and squishmallow content. I'm going to have a lot more of that coming. I, it's such a big part of my life, uh, but I would love to have you join me over there. It's, I'm having a lot of fun with that channel. Anyway, the landscaping is coming together here. You can see we changed the shape of the outside of the Spellcaster house. It's much more in line with like the cottages you see in Henford on Bagley, and I just think it looks really cute. I think all of these houses really fit the new world of, um, what is this world called? Moon, Moonwood Mill. I keep wanting to call it Moonlight Mill, but it's Moonwood Mill. <laughs> anyway, um, I think all of these worlds have like a little bit of a foresty feel, like the the vibe that all of the occult worlds have. Um, so I thought that they all fit really nicely here. I really like this new world. I think it's pretty. I'm probably going to build here a lot more. I know I'm probably going to be doing another state build sometime soon in this world. Uh, there were some suggestions of various states that would work because this is based on the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so probably something of that coming soon. I'm trying to figure out what uh, things I want to post right now because all I can think about is the uh, high school pack, obviously. And uh, we've done quite a few werewolf builds. So I don't think there's going to be too many more of those coming unless anyone has some really fun ideas. I think this is going to be the last occult build for a little bit. Uh, but it was a really fun one to end on combining three of the different occults into one lot. And uh, yeah, so I decided to add some of these like stones from debug, their base game stepping stones that are, uh, you know, you have to access through show live edit objects. And uh, I can't copy them right now because I was building this and I hadn't installed yet the new update for better build by and all of that, which is so helpful. I'm probably going to redownload that after I do this voiceover. <laughs> but uh, so I had to go through debug the, the old way a lot <laughs> for this video. I'm using so much landscaping from debug and these stones, of course. So I just wanted a pathway to the three houses so it's easier to get there. And then I have just dirt everywhere else and like terrain paint in general. But I thought having actual stones leading to the three homes would look nice and give the lot a little bit more structure. And I have some of it leading out as well. But I really like this fence that I put at the front. Um, that's also from debug. It came with the werewolf pack and here are the three little graves I put outside of them. Those are really cute. Uh, and then, of course, I added a bonfire over here, which came with werewolves as well. I wanted there just to be a spot like they could all hang out together and, you know, do whatever they'd like with the bonfire. And then I believe the first house we're going to decorate, which isn't yet, but the first one we're going to decorate is the werewolf's house. But I'm still outside bouncing around, adding various items throughout, trying to figure out where they should all go. I was heavily focusing on the exterior, uh, but I think we're finally heading inside now, trying to figure out a floor plan for this first house. Uh, they all have different floor plans, and it does take a while to figure out how to make them work because 
I was trying to figure out how to have like a separate bedroom and bathroom and like living space. It was okay if everything else was combined, all the living spaces, but I still wanted a separate bedroom and a separate bathroom. So that took a little bit of fiddling. Also, please ignore that those two mosquito windows that are on this lot are two different colors. One is silver and one is white. I do realize that in a little bit and change it. It just takes a while. <laughs> and it's really funny watching things like that back. I'm like, oh, wow, that was sitting like that for such a long time and I had no idea. Uh, but this is going to be the living room space in this particular house. You walk in and you are in the living space and there's a little, um, I guess like a an office space in the front of the build and the kitchen's through the back and it has a separate bedroom as well. Because there's an office in this one, you could probably have that be a, another bedroom if you wanted to, if you wanted to renovate it and have a separate bedroom space um, for a second sim, you could definitely do that. But I thought it was nice to add that as an office and this house definitely prioritized the kitchen. I was thinking uh, for spellcasters and werewolves, uh, having a decent sized kitchen made sense. Um, I don't remember what size it is for the vampires. I think it's a decent size because I was just struggling with the floor plan in that one so much because of course this lot is on a diagonal and um, <laughs> I did that to myself, but it's okay. It, it turned out fine in the end. I'm not upset about it. Uh, but this is the kitchen coming together now. I just have a table and chairs in here and I used the counters from base game. And then the fridge is actually one from the cottage living pack. I just thought it fit the style really nicely and uh, just getting a couple more decorations in there. And then we're moving on into the living room. I have a very heavily brown and blue color scheme in this house, which I think worked beautifully. I really like how that came out. Uh, and I have the new couch in here as well. It's a little bit big for the space, but I needed to use it. It just looks so good. And you can see the windows are both gray now. They're both a silver color. So I figured it out. I fixed it. Uh, and then I got like a punch mark by the wall. And this house has the smallest of the bathrooms. It's a three tile bathroom. Uh, it's like my standard tiny house bathroom I do where the shower is in the middle. It's the Discover University one that your Sims can actually walk over. And then I have a toilet and a sink in there. And they're more like made pieces. It looks like they constructed them with wood. One thing I didn't add on this lot that I think would be nice, and I just didn't think of it, is a... Um, what would it, a woodworking table that would have been nice I think also a flower arranging table would be cool as well those would be nice things to add to maybe that area where I have the bonfire or on the extra deck space that either of the houses have I think that would be cool anyway this is the little office space I had mentioned I had to use the desk that came with werewolves there's two that actually came with it but this one's just amazing it's a door they took an old door off the hinges and they're using it as a desk <laughs> And it's something about that just makes me so happy. I really love the DIY element of this pack as well as the little campers kit that both came back, came out back to back. I just think they are so cool and they work beautifully with like eco lifestyle and a couple of the other items. I had to use the grill out here from Jungle Adventure that is like a barrel. We have like a trash can now from this werewolf's pack that looks just like that. So that's also on this lot. I have some old tires around. I put some flowers in there and then we're heading to figure out the floor plan in the spellcaster house, which, um, you know, <laughs> it was also a struggle, but not as much. You can see that one came together pretty okay here. I did cut out a little bit of footage, but I think the one that was the most difficult was the vampire house. <laughs> so we'll get to that in a little while. But in this particular house, you walk in and you're directly in the kitchen and it's a very cottagey looking vibe in here. I have some things that are from the uh, Spellcaster pack, but I wasn't really going for that vibe. I, I really wanted like a little cottagey witch space. Uh, I thought it matched the style of this lot a little bit better as well. So that is what I ended up doing. I also decided not to use the sink that came with this set. It just didn't feel right. I, I was like, I'm going for like a little cottage witch. I don't want a giant rooster on the sink, so I don't know. Uh, I got rid of that and we're just figuring out what sort of tiles to do in here and all of the different wallpapers. Um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy how this kitchen came out. It's a little weird because I will be deleting some counters here in a second and putting in some potions in a big like display case sort of you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second but I really wanted this kitchen to look interesting and customized for this spellcaster so this is what I ended up doing it's a little weird but I also really like it so 
Let me know what you think of that. There is a free corner counter for your Sims to go ahead and cook on. I also, a lot of times in spellcaster houses, will raise up that particular cauldr cauldron from the spooky stuff pack. Uh, it's not like a fully functional item. It has like a decoration or like, I don't know what to call it, like sort of a hologram that comes out of it. It's, it's a Halloween decoration, but I think it looks like you could have a cauldron to stir up all sorts of potions and stuff on the stove because with spellcasters, we only got a giant cauldron, which I placed outside so your sims can use it. But I, I, I would like to have one that fits in the house a little bit easier. So I like to use that one for decoration. And then that was the bathroom. It's pretty colorful. And I really wanted this particular sim to be really into plants. So there ends up being a lot of plants and like nature themed things in this spellcaster house which I really like and I feel like it fits really well with the idea of a spellcaster, all of the different like elements you might use in your potions and spells. So there are a lot of plants in here and of course <laughs> the blooming rooms kit came in a lot of handy, especially with that uh, like leaf curtain I put in here. I think it's so pretty. This bed is also gorgeous. I think it's from, is that from Outdoor Retreat? I want to say it's from Outdoor Retreat. I'm not entirely sure though. But I thought it looked really nice in this space. And then we're just going to get a little dresser. I ended up using the one from Cats and Dogs. And I knew I wanted it, but I couldn't find it for some reason. You can see me just struggling back and forth, scrolling up and down and up and down, trying to find it. But I have that and a little mirror. And I'm trying to think what else I put in here. Probably another plant. Yeah, just lots of plants absolutely everywhere. And then in the living room space, I made sure to use this like magical looking fireplace that we got with Realm of Magic. It doesn't quite fit the style of the rest of the house but I liked how it is so magical with all the little crystals in the bottom. So I got that. And then the rest of the furniture for the most part is, well, the couch anyway is from Cats and Dogs. And I have a rocking chair in here as well and just a few other decorations. I made sure all three of the houses have a TV. I'm not sure how realistic that is. Granted, these are for <laughs> occult sims, so they're not realistic to begin with, but I just thought it was good for gameplay. It's a good source of fun for your sims, but I didn't make it like super prominent in any of the houses. They all have really small televisions. So you could definitely get rid of those if you wanted to. But here I am trying to figure out the floor plan at the vampire house because I wanted downstairs to be where there was a coffin for them to sleep in. But I wanted there to be a bedroom upstairs that doesn't look suspicious at all. But there is like a hidden ladder in it that leads you downstairs. So that was the idea there. And as you can see, the horrible shadows on the kitchen counters because I kept trying to figure out this floor plan and I couldn't figure out a way to have the kitchen not be on a diagonal. So we had to deal with it, but I thought of any of them. If the kitchen that's not really going to be used has some weird shadows, that's fine. It's, it's fine. We're going to ignore that. I feel like they're never going to fix that at this point. It's been eight years, but this is the kitchen. I did use the counter set from Vampires. I kept going back and forth, but I did keep the green ones in the end. I think they're really pretty. And I'm just using like the base game uh, stove and refrigerator in here as well. And then these really cute curtains from the Paranormal pack. Paranormal is also a really good pack. It's a stuff pack. It was the last stuff pack we got a couple of years ago now. I don't know if we'll ever get stuff packs back, but it's a really good one. It has some beautiful items, not only for like paranormal or occult type builds, but for like everyday stuff, there's some gorgeous plants in there. The couch, the chairs, the, it's, it's just a beautiful stuff pack. I would highly recommend it. Uh, but in here, I just got some like aprons and a trash can and that's it for the kitchen. And then we're moving on into the very strange shaped living room area. <laughs> I end up splitting this up into like a few different sections after experimenting quite a bit because I didn't know where to put anything. It was just such a weird shape. I was like, okay, I know I want to have a TV and some paintings and like definitely highlight some of the vampire furniture and make it like a cozy, cute space. But how do I lay this out? And then I decided, you know, maybe we'll put the TV and stuff over here and the couch over there. Let's move the rug. But then I have like weird spacing. <laughs> so I just kept moving everything around and I ended up building another wall here, which I think worked out nicely because it gives it a more defined entrance space and then a wall for decorations and a little nook over there for the living space and the TV and stuff. So that is what I ended up doing in the end. I think it worked out nicely. It also gave me space to put this uh, like hutch that came with vampires that has a skull in it. I think it's really cool. And then over here, I was able to actually fit another chair from vampires. It's a very fancy chair. 
And uh, so I, I really like how this little corner came out. It was a weird floor plan. It took a lot of fiddling, but it was worth it in the end. I, I think it came out really cute. I really like the vampires, a tiny house. Oh, speaking of which, uh, once these are all finished, I would definitely like to know in the comments which of these three tiny houses you like the best, and also which of the three occults in the game you like the best. I think werewolves have the most detail, but like vampires stole my heart when we first got them, and then spellcasters, uh, I was a little bit disappointed by them. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know where I would vote for those, and I'm not sure which one of these three tiny houses is my favorite. I had a lot of fun with this one, though. This whole lot was fun. Can I just pick uh, landscaping as my favorite part instead of which tiny house? But uh, I would like to know which tiny house you like the best and you would like to have your savings live in and all of that. I don't know. I'm just really curious, and this was such a fun build, so I'm very excited to share it. Uh, just decorating the little bedroom space now that is supposed to be very simple. I just wanted it to look unexpected. Um, or no, I don't think that's the word I was looking for, but I didn't want it to look suspicious, I guess. So it's just a bed, a bedside table, and a rug. One painting, and that's pretty much it for the space, just getting a lamp. And then we have a little door over here. I put the bookcase door, and that's where you get down through the ladder to go downstairs to where you're actually going to sleep in your coffin. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this build. Just getting a couple more decorations down here in the basement area, and then we're going to be heading on into screenshots. I really hope you enjoyed this because I know I did. If you did, please make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel if you have not already and click that bell to be notified when I upload. Thank you so very much for watching. Enjoy the screenshots and I will see y'all soon. Bye everyone.